In today's video, I'm going to save your time and help you figure out the three questions about this classic book for entrepreneurs, The Lean Startup. Is it worth your time to read the whole book? What concepts and the tools you can actually learn from this book and how to apply this book to your work? Is it worth it to read this book? The short answer is absolutely yes. And here are my three reasons. The first one is this book cured my anxiety. Several days ago, I entered the finale of a local startup competition. After that, I realized I'm the only startup that hadn't actually launched the product and everyone else has an established business. One of them even had a $1 million annual recurring revenue. Every day I was super anxious. On the third night, I finally gave up. I picked up this random book out of many books laying around in our house. The root cause of my anxiety was the idea that I won't be able to make any progress in this one week before the competition happened. However, after spending two days reading this book, I learned it's actually possible. And the book told me exactly how to do that. So I implemented it and my anxiety is gone. The second reason is I think this book makes me slightly less boring as a person. Even if you are not interested in building a startup, just reading this book as an entertainment, it's still a good rate. For example, I learned stories like how 2003 launch from NASA became a disaster because of their culture, how Kichiro Toyoda revolutionized the loom industry in Japan before it expands to the automobile, and how Andan Cord is related to the paper lamp. The coolest one is automation is pronounced as jidoka in Japanese, but when you read this Japanese kanji as Mandarin, it pronounced as zidonghua, which sounds quite similar. I feel it's so cool when all the tiny pieces in your world start clicking. I think sense making lets your life flourish because everyone has more control in pursuing the desire of being interesting over pursuing the desire of being successful. Reading an interesting book and living an interesting life is a way to become an interesting person. The last one is the book itself is a good investment for building startup. It took me two days to read this whole book. If you put that investment in the horizon of an entrepreneur journey, which usually lasts a decade, probably three decades, it's a pretty good investment. Once you have a first understanding of the concepts and tools and stories offered by this book, you have more foresight and you can quickly revisit those tools when you actually need them in the future on the go. Just like any venture in life, everything you do is to stack up the probability for the success. After the reading, when you fail, which you still will do, at least you know it's not because of the theoretical knowledge. And by ruling out some factors, it makes your debugging easier. This is a tweet from Ravel. Instead of reading more and more books, read the best 101 over and over. This book, Lean Startup, is in that 100 book list. The first concept is validated learning, which is the best way to navigate in the context of extreme uncertainty because it helps you to eliminate the highest risks. If you close your eyes and imagine you did all you can, but your startup failed, what the reason could be? Yes, it could be your laziness or execution power, but that's your personal development. For a startup, the highest risk is your assumption of customer behavior. So the best starting point is to ask yourself, what are your assumptions of customer behaviors that are critical? Critical to the success of your business. To answer this question, you need validated learning, which means you always have a clear hypothesis and testing. An example is Dropbox. When the founder trying to validate if people actually wanted the same list file sync service, he wasn't able to build a prototype because the technology is very deep into different operating systems. So instead, he made a video to show how the technology is supposed to function and upload it to the website. Then overnight, their waiting list of early adopters went from 5,000 to 75,000. And only after that, they started building. To conduct validated learning efficiently, Eric further introduced this build, measure, and learn loop, where he introduced the concepts such as agile and continuous deployment, and how to find the right metrics for different types of growth engine. Mind you, this book was published 15 years ago. So although those concepts are common nowadays, they are innovation back then. And the key point is the whole efforts of a startup should focus on speeding up this loop. The efforts to build anything shouldn't be more than what it takes to validate your learning. Startup is an institution of people. All these practices are eventually conducted by people. So Eric introduced this concept called innovation accounting. Metrics are also people. When you started asking why for a technical problem, they usually lead to a people problem, which exposes where the system can have more prevention to prevent this people problem happen. When you lose, don't lose the lessons. In any step of your startup development, the earlier you can capture a mistake, the better. The second concept is growth engine model. 
models. The very first one is the most popular growth of mouth, which usually have this built-in virality and can be measured by a viral coefficient. The second one is slightly different than the first one in the sense you don't need to actively promote this product. Your usage of the product itself promote this product. This is most common in fashion and social status. If you, other people saw you wear a cloth or drive a car, they will want it. Examples in technology are Hotmail, iPhone, and Chili Pepper. When they add their company's name after each email, each message, or each form. The third one is funded advertising. As long as your cost of acquiring a customer is lower than the revenue they generated, you can use that margin to further advertise for your product. The last one is repeated purchase or use, which is very common for SaaS product because we all want recurring revenue. A common issue for startup is they aren't aware which growth engine is actually working. So when they look at the feedback, they were looking at the wrong metrics, which can be totally misleading for the development team. The last concept is this vision strategy and the product pyramid. Eric starts with an analogy for how we drive car versus how we launch rocket. When we drive car, as long as we know where the destination is, it doesn't matter if we turn around a one corner or miss the one traffic light. We will never recall what exact action we took to drive the car as long as we know the route. However, the story is very different for launching a rocket. If any piece went wrong, the launch will fail. And he wants you to think running a startup more like a car rather than launching a rocket. A single piece will not break it as long as you are very clear the route you are taking. And that's where he delineates between the vision, the strategy, and the product. The product is the most tangible one. When you have a product, we usually work on optimization of the features. But the most harder question lies on the strategy level. When you don't even have a clear idea of what customer you are trying to serve or what problem you are trying to solve. Through validated learning, if you learned that your assumption on who are the customer or what the problems you are solving are wrong, you may need to pivot. And there are several ways to pivot explained by the author, such as zoom in, zoom out, platform, or customer segmentation. And in the end, the vision of the founder could be totally wrong. All founders have this distorted vision of how the future is supposed to be, but not everyone gets it right. So this validated learning promoted by Eric is a way to let the reality pierce into founder's vision. Of course, I can't cover everything in this book, so I organized some links to the case studies mentioned by this book. So how to apply this book to a startup? For most ideas in this book, Eric didn't invent them. He borrowed them from lean manufacturing and validated them in his startups. Back to the issue I had in the beginning. I felt anxious and I felt stuck because I didn't know a clear way to measure my progress and manage my activities. I tried building a prototype and interviewing people at the same time and they become chicken and egg problem. To apply the idea of validated learning, I decided to run a marketing campaign to drive people to my website how many people will actually click what I'm going to offer. My hypothesis is that people will use wireless mic to capture their speech for highly personalized speech feedback. And if I can get more than 50% conversion rate, I will claim my hypothesis is correct. The author Eric Ries continues leading this lean startup movement in the past 14 years since he proposed this methodology in 2008. So you can check out the lean startup website or follow him on his Twitter. Let me end today's video with a testimony from this book. Every founding team should stop for 48 hours and read the lean startup. Seriously, stop and read this book now.